these results out in the real world where they can really help uh, make a difference in transportation safety. So uh, we've had a few of these <clears throat> uh, presentations so far. I think this is our, <clears throat> excuse me, our fourth presentation, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we put the recordings for each presentation on the CTS uh, website. Uh, if it's not up in the next couple of days, it'll be there soon. Uh, but uh, I invite everybody to uh, go look through those prior presentations. Uh, we also have presentations planned about every quarter, and uh, we will identify the date for the next presentation and the next topic uh, very shortly, and then that's, we'll send that out to everybody who's on our list. If you're not on our distribution list, um, I will put my uh, email in the chat window in just a second here. If you want to be on that list or you know somebody else who would like to receive invitations to these presentations, just shoot me an email and let me know and we'll put them on. Uh, we try not to barrage everybody with additional emails and everything else. It's mainly just e an email about the uh, presentations that we have here. So uh, we're really fortunate today. Uh, we have uh, Srinivas Gitapali and his student. Uh, who have done a who did a project on pedestrian safety near bus stops? Uh, again, this was an intern partly internally funded, uh, but uh, in light of the fact that the uh, the risks for pedestrians seems to get greater and greater, we have more pedestrians uh, dying now than ever before. Uh, we see that trend across the United States. Uh, one of our neighbor states, New Mexico. Uh, actually has one of the highest uh, pedestrian fatality rates in the country. So addressing pedestrian safety, particularly in areas where pedestrians and vehicles are known to get basically close to each other, where that risk tends to be elevated, is a critical issue in transportation safety, and particularly in Texas, uh, in our main urban areas. So uh, with that very, very short introduction, I'm going to turn it over to Srinivas. Okay. Sure. Sure, sure. Um, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Again, uh, sorry, I think uh, the calendar invitation was a little off. I know some people joined at like 11.15, 11.20. I told them, hey, this is at 12 o'clock. So sorry for the confusion. Again, uh, this is the time. So let me share my screen. So... Okay. You can see my screen, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, so today, again, uh, me and uh, Mohammed Danis, uh, he's a PhD student at the a and Texas a &M University. He has been working on this project for a few years now. Uh, so we both will be presenting um, about the risk factors and how we uh, selected the top risk bus stops and uh, what kind of outreach we did the, at those bus stops. Uh, again, this is a multi-year project. Again, um, it's been there for last five years now. Uh, we did in Houston, we did in San Antonio, then we moved to Dallas. Last year, we did in Austin. Uh, this year, we are doing in Fort Worth, and next year, we will be doing in El Paso. So uh, the, the results that I am showing here in my presentation today, it will be based on our work in Austin and Fort Worth. Okay, uh, although the title says it's just identifying risk factors, but as I men just mentioned that it's not only risk factors, I will show you the high risk corridors and then what kind of outreach material we developed and we distributed. Okay, so again, the outline, uh, we have four parts here. Uh, first part uh, will be the introduction, then the framework that we used. Uh, the results and then the outreach activities that we conducted. Um, again, um, as you all know, pedestrian safety is one of the biggest issues in the nation and as well as in Texas. Um, so again, we all know that they are raising, even though the traffic fatalities went down, but the pedestrian fatalities uh, you know, were always going up. Uh, in the last 20 years. Um, so um, again, um, in Texas, we have like 20% of the traffic fatalities are related to pedestrians. 
And just to give you a magnitude in 2021, we saw like 5,000 plus pedestrian crashes that resulted in about 840 deaths. That's like a 13% increase from 2020 to 2021. Again, the below graph shows the fatalities in the US. As you can see, we are like, we used to touch 40,000s uh, before the recession. Uh, and then we started to hit again from 2021 onwards. Um, so as you can see those bars there, uh, again, pedestrian uh, fatalities, uh, they are in the bottom line, the one in the red. As you can see, they are trending upwards in the nation as well. Okay, so this project is about uh, identifying the high risk bus stops for pedestrian safety and then uh, to educate uh, the bus drivers, bus riders, pedestrian, which are also pedestrians, bus drivers and motorists about the right of way laws and to improve the safety. Again, uh, previously I had another project where we were just collecting the pedestrian safety database and then we were trying to identify the mid block locations, the locations that are between uh, the intersections, major intersections, when we were uh, getting the data, the pedestrian safety data, we found that most of those high risk locations uh, have like a bus stop nearby. So about 70% of the mid block locations that we checked had a bus stop. So we thought like, okay, uh, again, bus stops by themselves are not causing the problem, but uh, they are the generators, pedestrian generators. Um, so uh, when there are pedestrians, you will see pedestrian crashes as well. It's an exposure. So uh, again, crashes, it's is a uh, multiplication of two things, one exposure and the other is the risk. So uh, again, when there is more exposure, then you will see more crashes. And when there is more risk, you will see more crashes. So what we did was uh, we uh, actually collected the bus stop data from the Metro. Um, again, uh, Cap Metro in uh, in Austin and Trinity Metro in uh, Fort Worth. So we got the data geolocation. Um, there were about like 2000 plus in Fort Worth and in Austin. Uh, there were 9000 plus in Houston uh, bus stops just to give you a magnitude of number of bus stops. So the objective was to go to the high risk bus stops and then do the outreach activities. And since we cannot go to each and every bus stop, so we wanted to select top uh, 75 bus stops and then uh, go there and do the distribution, the material. Um, so uh, again, we use different approaches. So we collected a lot of data, a lot of risk factors that influence the safety. Uh, as you can see, the uh, we collected in three categories. One is exposure, which includes the traffic volume on the street where the bus stop is located, boarding and alighting data, number of schools, number of parks, number of bus stops uh, within a quarter mile radius of the bu uh, bus stop that we are interested in, and the number of lanes on the street. Again, all these uh, influence the exposure of the pedestrians as well as the vehicular volume that influence the safety. And we also collected uh, the roadway and environmental data like crosswalk, what type of median we had, uh, you know, is uh, what is the lighting condition, posted speed limit, and all, all those conditions that influence. So, and then we also collected uh, a few variables that are very specific to, uh, specific to bus stops. As you can see, if there is a sidewalk nearby, if there is a horizontal curve, or what is the design? Is it a near side bus stop, which is um, right before the intersection, or is it right after the intersection? How far is the intersection from the bus stop? Uh, all those variables that influence the safety. And we we used uh, state databases like text text databases, and as well we went into Google Aerial View, Google Street Aerial View, and Street View, and collected all those variables. So uh, and then what we did was like for every bus stop, we we got uh, pedestrian crashes within two fifty feet radius of the bus stop. 
Again, I always give this caution because uh, it was misunderstood initially that, uh, you know, all the pedestrian crashes that happened are bus passengers. It is not necessarily, and there is no way for us know uh, for us to know from the crash data whether that pedestrian who was involved in a collision at the bus stop is a bus passenger or not. And then we also try to eliminate uh, all the crashes that are within 250 feet radius but are not on the street where the bus stop is located. So we did manual checks. We uh, so we we used we got all the crashes that are only on the street where the bus stop is located. Okay, this is the introduction, and then uh, we'll go into the framework. Uh, so we use three different methods. First is the systemic approach, which is the easiest uh, approach, uh, comparing the exposure versus the crashes, uh, which is what we used in the project, because our primary goal in the project was to select the top risk bus stops. Uh, not really to understand what variables are influencing the safety at those, but uh, since the objective was a bit broad, we used the systemic approach uh, in the project uh, for selecting the bus stops. However, um, we use the statistical analysis methods and as well as machine learning methods uh, uh, you know, to understand the data, uh, understand the factors that influence the safety, um, and then uh, we came up with nice models, good models that are meaningful. And then uh, we uh, published that work as well, which I think, uh, uh, which um, um, Anis will talk about uh, in detail after, after I'm done with the systemic approach. Okay, so uh, again, um, we all know that developing models is a crucial uh, step to identify the relationship. Um, so, um, so those are the three methods uh, that we in, uh, included. First one is the systemic, again, in the project. This is the systemic one that I'm showing on my screen. I'll explain in details what those bars mean. So, um, as you can see here, what we wanted to do is to identify the risk factors. We want to compare the stops that are crash history with the stops that do not. So alternatively, we can say that we want to compare the unsafe bus stops with the safe bus stops just to see which variables are overrepresented. Uh, so the red bars here are the for the stops with crash history. Uh, so uh, as you can see, like uh, on the top left, uh, the red bar, which means 24 percent of the stops that had crash history were in that volume, AADT, uh, average annual daily traffic, that's the traffic volume uh, in that range. Whereas 44% of the stops without crash history uh, are in that category. So uh, basically, in theory, if uh, volume is not an influential variable, the red bar and green bar should be of same height. If the green bar is taller, then there is an underrepresentation. And if the red bar is taller, then there is an overrepresentation. So, uh, just to give you an idea here, 10,000 to 20,000, we can see that 53% of bus stops that had crash history are in this category, whereas only 43%. So, there is an overrepresentation in this category. So, which is like 53 minus 43, 10% overrepresentation. Uh, so we use that as one of the factors uh, in uh, calculating the weights to assign to a bus stop. And we as well included the crash total because 53% of the crashes are occurring at those bus stops as well. So we use those two uh, and then assign weight for each of those categories for each variable. As you can see, uh, bottom two, one is marked crosswalk. Uh, so if there is a mark crosswalk nearby, which is yes, then it's an underrepresentation. Or if there is no mark crosswalk, then there is an overrepresentation of uh, those bus stops, which means that is one of the uh, risk factors that influence the safety. And then uh, intersection type as well. What is the nearest intersection? Is it an unsignalized intersection or signalized intersection? 
uh, as you can see again if the uh, nearest intersection is unsignalized then there is an over representation here uh, again it's uh, it's not a cause effect truly this is just a correlation so uh, when there is a signalized bus stop we can um, you know assume that the pedestrian goes to the signal and then waits for the uh, pedestrian signal to come and then cross at the signal when there is an unsignalized intersection then there is always a confusion who has right of way so these are just uh, and some examples again we did similar analysis for all the variables that you see here uh, you know distance to the intersection intersection types like what is the bus stop design um, you know whether there is a cover is it a covered bus stop or not uh, all that variables is what uh, we collected and we analyzed here okay and this is about the systemic approach and this is the method we used in the project now uh, i'll turn it over to Mohammed Danis. Uh, he will explain about the other two methods. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mohammed Danis. Uh, I'm a third year PhD student in uh, transportation engineering at Texas a &M University. Uh, since summer 2020, I have been affiliated with Texas a &M Transportation Institute under the supervision of Dr. Srinivas Gidipali as a graduate assistant research. Uh, during my time here, I have been involved in several projects, including the study focused on identifying pedestrian crash risk factor near bus stops in urban areas. Uh, to accomplish this, uh, we employed three models as briefly mentioned in the previous slides. Uh, I will explain the traditional statistical approach to identify risk factors. Uh, in this analysis, we used a detailed data set of different area of taxes, as mentioned by Dr. Gilipoli. So we uh, developed safety performance functions through a traditional statistical model to identify various crash contributing factors by examining their relationship between pedestrian crashes and risk factors. Uh, we used multiple statistical models. Uh, we are selected based on previous road crash frequency modeling st uh, studies. Uh, we can see uh, pedestrian crash data from the study areas exhibited excessive zeros and significant right skewness as shown in the figure. Uh, to address these numerous uh, zero crash sites and over dispersion such as variance exit the mean of crash data, the study applied negative binomial distribution model. The right side of the sections listed uh, average uh, marginal effects of various risk factors. When applying the model, uh, the marginal effect represents the unit change in expected crash frequency of, for the change in indicator variable value from 0 to 1. Uh, the model uh, reveals that natural logarithm of AADT is significant. And we can see the previous slides as also shown in the systematic approach. We tested all variables, uh, 95 credible interval through Bayesian estimation. Uh, which indicate that ADT indicating a positive association with crash frequency. That means when vehicle exposure more exposure most, uh, the crash frequency are increasing more. Uh, since uh, through uh, boarding, alighting, or pedestrian walkway around the bus stops, uh, uh, ADT when vehicles move through the pedestrian uh, bus stops area, so more pedestrian exposed. So crash is increasing. As high vehicle exposure increasing crash frequency, the same characteristics is shown by pedestrian exposure. Is, uh, we, we, we present here as average, average on. Uh, another one is uh, signal life intersections. Uh, signal life intersection is uh, uh, negatively inter associated with crash frequency. That means when signal line intersection, any bus stops are near by bus stops, uh, the crash frequency is less than non signal line intersections. Uh, since uh, it at signalized intersection, there's a 
crosswalk available. Uh, that means uh, people are uh, across the road more safely. The other one is uh, far side. Far side means proximity. When bus stops, uh, proximity is a far side or near side. So uh, when um, uh, far uh, intersection is far side from the bus stops, uh, it means negatively associated with crash frequency. Uh, uh, if uh, if if any near side of intersections, so near the intersections, the pedestrians uh, activities higher than far side. So that means exposure is less. At far yeah, side just, to, well. just to put into the numbers, uh, near side bus stops experience 20% more crashes than the far side bus stops. Uh, when we convert that effect into the number. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Uh, and another one is uh, school. Uh, we counted school uh, near uh, close to the bus stops where, so we, we chose reference as a school one or zero and let, so when school is greater than one, uh, it's increasing more uh, more pedestrian uh, exposure to the bus stops. Uh, so so when pedestrian in, uh, activities higher in uh, bus stops area, so uh, pedestrian most exposed to the vehicle and uh, high chance to increase the crashes. And the next important variable is speed limit. Uh, we we saw that uh, speed limit near the bus stops most of them is a 35 uh, 35 to 30 to 35 mph so uh, uh, we got a paradoxical results here uh, when speed limit is lower it's increasing high pedestrian crashes probably uh, there's a chance of uh, when when pedestrian uh, saw that the pet speed limit is, is is low people try people try to cross the road uh, uh, not so much and, and uh, noticed uh, the vehicles coming. So there's a high chance of pedestrian uh, crashes. And uh, the important variables, another one is uh, a median. Uh, if median is un undivided, uh, the crash uh, crash chance is high rather than, rather than divided. Uh, and the next one is uh, mixed area. So Mixer means uh, it's it can be it's it's a it's a mixer of commercial and residential area. So when we collected data sets, uh, so we we identified uh, separately commercial, residential, and mixed area. So in the in this sense, mixed area uh, uh, pedestrian crashes negatively associated with uh, the uh, because of uh, mixer. There is a lot of uh, probably speed bump or walkway. And properly, people are more uh, cautious to pass them um, to cross the road. So uh, this, uh, this is uh, so there's a negative negative necessary crash risk. Next. So while we uh, model the uh, the statistical approach using negative binomial, uh, we uh, we we uh, we made a different approach uh, that they are. Uh, if effect and so we saw we 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 understand that we need to increase our model efficiency. So uh, we we use another uh, statistical approach negative binomial delay. That means uh, for uh, fitting better uh, to the over dispersion and uh, long and heavy tails, uh, we added another uh, parameter to the delay. Uh, so this this uh, statistical approach. Uh, Characteristics is uh, uh, can handle uh, these three characteristics: over dispersion, long and heavy tails, and excess zero observations. So uh, through the measure, uh, we found that uh, it's it's fit better than negative binomial, uh, which is proved by uh, uh, previous studies uh, of road crashes frequency and data analysis. So which is matched with our results. So in this sense, uh, average marginal effects, we, we got the similar uh, risk factors are significant, but uh, their, their effects are different from one uh, negative binomial to negative binomial Lindley. Uh, for example, in this sense, school is most higher effects in this sense, uh, this model. Next. So, uh, 
So in this progress, uh, we used a different a advanced statistical approach, uh, which is random parameter negative binomial Dindle, uh, which is a mixed distribution model. Uh, this model used to use uh, uh, used to used to use for capture unobserved heterogeneity. For example, uh, uh, there's a special variation are observed in some variables like AADT, uh, prediction exposure, and spirit limit. Uh, and so, and um, and we know that different observes, uh, different variables observations are varied over stops. So capture all types of unobserved heterogeneity and variability of their are their changes we used this uh, this model and this model uh, we when we checked uh, through cure plots uh, it shows better better than negative binomial and negative binomial in the model when we when we see the uh, red line red line means it's a cumulative uh, residual residual uh, when it's a uh, resonance uh, near to the uh, zero that means uh, it's uh, captured very well uh, with for different variables, and we checked other other measure like uh, DIC. Uh, it's it's a Bayesian estimation uh, measure uh, deviance of information criterion, uh, which is lower than other variables. So if you if you if you talk about uh, marginal effect, uh, we got uh, similar risk factors, but we got three new uh, three new uh, variables like liking. Uh, marked court crosswalk and sidewalk. Uh, we know that lighting is very important uh, near to the uh, bus stops uh, when no light uh, in the uh, near the close to the bus stops. It's it's uh, increasing. Uh, it's uh, positively associated with crash freaks. And uh, similar to the uh, crosswalk, uh, if there is no crosswalk, that means high high crash association. Uh, without crosswalk, people used to um, across the road. Uh, Route, so there's a high chance of pedestrian crashes. And the next one is a sidewalk. Uh, so this result is very intuitive. Uh, when uh, when side when there's a sidewalk uh, nearest to the bus stops, it's negatively associated with crash risk. So uh, this model uh, capture uh, other variables and and captures more uh, more uh, accurately uh, to predict the risk factors, their effects. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Again, as you all can see here, uh, this is a complex model, a very complicated model, but it was able to capture the effect properly. As you can see, the lighting, just to uh, convert that marginal effect into numbers, if there is no lighting, then uh, the crashes will go up by 8% compared, like, uh, compared to where there is a lighting. Similarly, with the mark crosswalk and then the negative effect, as you can see, uh, with the sidewalk. So when there is a sidewalk, we see fewer crashes, fewer pedestrian crashes. So Srinivas, what's that? If, can you go back one slide? What's the effect for like the big factors? The uh, school was relatively high, like 0.4 in I think each of the three models. So what what percent increase? might that represent is that I mean, so it's, it's, it's uh, uh, when we convert that one so compared to if you have only zero or one school and then that's a reference and when we compare that to the schools with uh, one plus schools bus stop with one plus schools so that is uh 50 percent more crashes 52 percent more crashes that's massive yeah so again, it will it will uh, these models will help us to understand the risk factors and, uh, you know, to apply the treatments or any other countermeasures that are related to the pedestrians. So uh, and then uh, go ahead, uh, Anis. So uh, this is the other approach, uh, machine learning. Uh, we usually use a statistical model for for get the coefficients of each risk factors, uh, which we consider always it's a uh, linear linear changes. When we try to uh, set a relationship uh, non-linear between crash crash factors and pedestrian crashes, 
uh, we used a machine learning model. This is the widely known two models is Exibost and Random Forest. Uh, they, they, they are enabled to capture complex non-linear non relationships. So uh, we used for uh, this, this, uh, this model for only for uh, continuous variable, for example, ADT, distance to intersections, uh, school counts. So they are all continuous variables. So we can see that ADT, uh, first, first three sites, uh, we used ADT for one coefficient. But for now, for this approach, uh, we, we can see there is a variation uh, when it is increasing. It's not like a all time all time is increasing. So there's a variations. So it's a non. So, so this is the based on the data based on data. So, uh, for example, distance when distance is uh, distance is greater from bus stops to intersections. Uh, there's a crash is uh, decreasing. Crash probability is decreasing. Uh, for both uh, two uh, two models, we 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 select exibost based on cure plot. When we see cure plot, the random forest uh, community residual, it's not near to that zero. Uh, that means it's, it 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 could not uh, uh, capture all all very effectively. In the sense, uh, exibost uh, uh, captures well, and 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 it's. It, it, between uh, creditable interval. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, uh, the machine learning, uh, the statistical models, they assume that the effect is the same uh, for every bus stop, but here we uh, try to capture that nonlinear relationship too. So we are not, so in, with these models, it's not a fixed effect. So it varies from side to side. Uh, again, although it is complex, it will try to get an accurate, uh, you know, relationship between the dependent and independent variables. Uh, so far, uh, we uh, last year we submitted last uh, we submitted a paper TRV and we present presented uh, 2024. Uh, uh, Name is enhancing pedestrian safety near bus stops, integrating statistical and machine learning approach. That that paper we we compare statistical model and machine learning model. Their 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 results comparison, and this year we submitted another paper based on random parameter negative binomial in the model pedestrian safety near bus stops. So it's under review, and we are in process to submit a paper a journal paper to the accident analysis and prevention. Which is which will be com very comprehensive. Uh, we will consider all types of approaches uh, in this paper. So it's it's, it's currently in process now. Okay. Uh, thank you, Anis. Again, so now we uh, understood the risk factors. So then the question is, so what, right? Like, what are we doing? Uh, we did all these models, all the machine learning, all the statistical models. We got all the variables. So what are we doing uh, you know, in practice, right? That's, that's the most critical one. So what we did, we applied the systemic approach in the project. And then out of all the bus stops that we have, we identified the high risk bus stop, top 75 bus stops in each of those cities. Again, I'm only showing Austin and Fort Worth here. Uh, as I said, we already did in other cities as well. You can see those uh, circles here. Those are uh, the high risk bus stops that we identify. Uh, again, um, so what we did was, okay, uh, they are like everywhere kind of. Uh, we developed heat maps and then we identified the corridors, okay? So as you can see, uh, Austin, we have about like eight or nine corridors that we identified and uh, similarly in Fort Worth. We discussed these results with uh, uh, the Metro as well and they said like, oh, these are clearly our high risk corridors as well. And that's where their safety focus is too. Again, we are doing in collaboration with them because we needed their support because we needed their data, uh, but they were really good. Uh, they supported us. In fact, they are using our material too and putting inside the buses that I'll show in my next few slides. So again, these are the corridors that we identified that we used to uh, do the outreach activities. We go to those uh, bus stops and do the outreach. 
Okay, so that's the last part, the outreach dissemination. So uh, again, uh, this is the tip card that we developed. It's a two-sided one. Again, I'm seeing both. I'm showing both sides here. Uh, the right side one is the front one, and the left side one is the back of the tip card. Um, it's it's a small, I don't remember the size, the exact size, but it's a small tip card where people can put in their purses. Um, so the front side will tell like what are the right of way rules, like who has a right of way, whether it's a pedestrian or whether it's a, a motor vehicle. And in the back side, it will give the tips, like nine tips uh, for people to follow. And we developed uh, these in English and Spanish. So when we go out uh, in the field, we try to distribute, uh, you know, whoever needs like in Spanish, we give Spanish, whoever needs in English, we give those English tip cards. We also did the stickers where people can, uh, you know, put on their laptops or on the purses too. And again, it's a simple line, walk smart, uh, walk safe kind of messaging. And uh, we also did the water bottles where it says like it has that QR code, uh, people can just, uh, uh, you know, um, use their phone and uh, access that QR code. Unfortunately, water bottles were not allowed. Uh, TechTot said that's not an uh, uh, allowable expense. So we were not able to do water bottles. However, we did the stickers and as well as fans. Again, it's so hot uh, when Anis and uh, Micah and the other students went out in the field. It was like 105, 110. And people like, you know, when we gave the fans to them, they were very, really happy. Again, it's fan as well as some information, walk smart. And on the back side, uh, we have the right of way and then those tips. And again, when, if they scan the QR code, it will take them to walk by Safe Texas. It is maintained by the Center for Transportation Safety. We have all the material uh, saved there. So we have videos, we have uh, all the stickers, all the outreach material that we develop. So this is how, again, we go uh, to the bus stops and we do we do the distribution. As you can see, most of the time, like 90, 95% of the time, uh, people like they're happy, uh, they take it, they try to read it. Uh, I know like many of them, like how do you know uh, if the behavior is changed, whether that improved any safety. It's really hard to capture because it's a human behavior. Uh, so, but again, we are, trying our best to improve the uh, behavior of the pedestrians. So again, as you can see, uh, this is Anis here. Uh, Mamadan is there uh, doing the distribution. Again, people taking and reading uh, those tip cards. We also developed the interior bus panels uh, to put inside the buses. Again, uh, we gave this to the Metro. And uh, again, the, the top one, it's in English and there are two separate ones, English and Spanish. Uh, again, th there is that QR code. Again, if mm, they use that QR code, it will take them to the website. Again, you, you can see here top one, this is the one in Cap Metro bus and bottom one is in the Trinity Metro that we are doing now. So they, they, they put like side by side, they put in all their buses. I think uh, we, we send them if 300 each or so posters uh, to them and they, they put inside their buses. Exterior bus posters also, again, simple message. Uh, all we are saying is for the uh, car driver, uh, just to look, there will be some pedestrians who will be crossing in front of the bus. So just look for pedestrians and, you know, drive safe. And, uh, you know, look for pedestrians, again, walk smart, walk safe kind of information. We were not very successful in putting these on the buses. On, we were only successful in Austin because they uh, they dedicate that area for their commercials and which they make a lot of money. And this is a free stuff. Um, so they were not uh, so encouraging to put this one, but Austin did put uh, in on their buses. So as you can see, Metro, uh, they put on the side and as well as in the back. 
Okay, so we also use social media. Uh, Jack is there, uh, he's our social media head. Uh, we publish uh, this on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, uh, so what we do is we send out these tips and then we have a short video uh, that goes with each of those postings. Let me play this video. It's again sh uh, short uh, to the point and then it just uh, gives like what the tip is about. Yield to pedestrians at crosswalks and intersections, look left, right and left again. So let me play this video. So uh, we have uh, videos for every tip. Uh, in total, we have 19 tips, uh, nine for the pedestrians and 10 for the drivers. Uh, so each tip has its own video, short, like less than 10 second video. Because again, as you all know, like, you know, videos are more attractive. Uh, you, you know, the attention uh, when we show video is more than just the text. So that's why we use those videos. Uh, again, uh, when we uh, publish uh, this, uh, we try to tag TechStart, we try to tag the city, we try to tag uh, the uh, metro. Uh, again, when we tag them, they reshare. As you can see, these are the ones that are reshared by Cap Metro, uh, one on Facebook and one on Instagram. So again, we with social media, the reach will be more. We try to reach more people with the social media. Uh, we have been doing now in the in, in this month uh, for Fort Worth audience as well. Uh, that's all. Again, thank you. Uh, project, uh, it's a TechStart uh, sponsored pro project, but again, match and student support is by Center for Transportation Safety. Thank you, Mike, for that. Uh, again, any questions, feel free to ask me now or you can just send out an email. That's my contact details. Thank you, Srinivas. Thank you, Mohammed. So any questions, initial questions for Srinivas and Mohammed? I do Hello. have one. Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Hello, this is Myung and I appreciate your presentation, Srinivas. So I have uh, two questions. So one is uh, when we talk about the pedestrian crashes, so I think one of the key factor or key risk factors are pedestrian exposures, right? So how many pedestrians are near the bus stop, something like that. So, but in your mother, you don't, uh, you didn't consider the pedestrian exposures, right? So we do did. you have any plan to consider no, that? You did. did it? Yes, so again, we use the average uh, lighting and boarding data, mm -hmm. uh, which is an indirect way of capturing the pedestrian exposure. And uh, uh, when uh, Anis showed it, average on, uh, which is like oh, people okay. getting into the bus mm -hmm. as one of the key variables there. So that's only for the, uh, the how many, you know, the passengers are used the uh, transit, right? Not uh, some, Correct. yeah, okay. Correct. I, I mean, uh, again, we don't have a direct measure, so we took the indirect measure to capture the pedestrian exposure. Okay. And my second question is, uh, you mentioned about the unmarked crosswalk is uh, uh, more riskier than the marked crosswalk, right? So. Uh, when I, uh, as I remember, so you show, uh, shared the graphs. That graph shows the more pedestrian crashes uh, uh, as uh, close to the intersections, right? Yeah. So again, um, there is uh, that controversy or whatever that is called. Uh, it, it is a counterintuitive finding. Uh, right you know you should expect like when there is in one of the models it showed a negative effect but again um, as robert always says just a marked crosswalk by itself will not improve safety uh, 
It needs to be accompanied by other traffic control device uh, to improve the pedestrian safety. So it could be way, uh, you know, various factors that are influencing there. Uh, again, that's why I said this is not a cause effect model. This is a correlation model. Uh, there could be other variables that are influencing that is getting captured by that crosswalk variable. Okay, I see. Uh, thank you. Yep, sure. Uh, uh, I have a, oh, uh, hold, just a yeah. second. So Joan had a question online uh, in the chat window. What is average on? Yeah, number of people that? that, yes, uh, per day, boarding the bus per day. Sorry, I cut someone off. I'm not sure who I did. Go yeah, ahead. Uh, I'm Sohel. Um, so I have one question. So you apply machine learning model for non-linear data. So how about like binomial model? Is it also non-linear data? Uh, sorry, uh, which data you said in the in the end? Uh, I mean, uh, ML model, machine learning model is used for non-linear data i mean there is no relation in the data yes and yes. my question is like how about the negative binomial model is it also same data that is like non-linear data yes yes we use the same data and we apply different model we use negative binomial model and as well the machine learning uh, methods too just to see like how the uh, model performs yeah, so my following question yeah my following question is like, how can you understand the top risk factors based on the specific like three models? I mean, in real life, in real life, which model gives you more accurate results? Because yes. we see in different risk factor in every model, they give like different kind of like risk factor. And it's true, but we need to be actually choose the appropriate risk factor. And how can you determine? Yeah. So again, it's it's we cannot say like we only can say that this model fitted the data better, right? Now, which one actually captures? Uh, again, it's very hard to tell that one. Again, it's it's a balance between the complexity of the model uh, uh, versus um, you know the simplicity versus the complexity, right? Do you yeah. want to go for the most complex model and get more accurate results versus the simple model and simple results, right? So, I mean, bottom line is, I, I don't think we, we can say this model is better or that model is better. Always the complex models are better, but again, it comes with a price, right? Uh, uh, but... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. But in a uh, machine learning model, they have like some accuracy and precision that is based on the uh, determine that model is like good or not. So, I mean, does this follow about this when you just apply machine learning model? Uh, Anis, do you want to add? Yes. Uh, so, uh, for the machine learning model, we compared with all the negative binomial uh, models to, comp to compare the, the simplest one. So uh, for this binomial, negative binomial, negative binomial Lindley and random parameter Lindley. So we got the best results <coughs> from these three random parameter, negative binomial Lindley. For the machine learning approach, uh, we we only compare with negative binomial with uh, machine learning approach. We got a better result for machine learning model to capture most variations. Uh, and how are the accuracy of the model? Uh, make accuracy. Uh, uh, I, I need I need to check the results right now. Okay, okay, no problem. Yeah, yeah. We 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 presented this uh, paper uh, to the uh, TRV last year. Uh, so we are mm -hmm. we are in process to uh, to do more rigorous analysis. Yeah, particularly if the accuracy is like higher than it can be. We say yes. that it's like good model. Yes. Also, you need to be. Yeah. Yeah, so machine learning model exposed uh, gave better result than negative binomial model. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. okay. Thank you. There's uh, two two questions online. Uh, Mira, thank you. Uh, I'll read yours first. Uh, did you find any overrepresentation of certain age groups, for example, children, young young teenagers, in the pedestrian crashes near bus stops with one plus schools nearby? And I think. I really like that question because one of the things 
my earlier question about the big effect near schools is pretty alarming. I mean, like a 50, I think Srinivasi said like a 50% jump. Uh, I mean, these are our most, they're, it, it, it's almost not surprising because these are our most vulnerable people out there, young kids, but it's a little scary that school areas are so risky. So are, was there any overrepresentation of those specific age groups? Yeah, uh, we did not do by age group. Uh, two reasons. One, um, the we, we only had like very few crashes, truly, uh, because the pedestrian crashes are rare. Uh, so that's why we did not do. And second, uh, the resources, uh, you know, uh, did not support doing that analysis. So maybe I think this is our official <laughs> avenue requesting you to give us funding <laughs> to explore that one. <laughs> yeah, but I think uh, that's a good point. I think uh, we should definitely explore that. Uh, we did not in our project, but that's a future research. Do you have that data? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Great. Okay. Awesome. Okay. And then soon he, uh, the question is what kind of crashes are considered? All crashes involving people or only crashes involving people on a roadway or crashes with errant vehicles? Uh, definitely not the third one, crashes with errant. All the crashes that are coded as pedestrian related are considered. Okay. So, which should be on the roadway, definitely. Uh, I was early on when you were showing slides of some of those factors in the models that were uh, had pretty high numbers. I, the the trend looked like it was unsignalized, uh, no markings, higher speed. Those are some big things. So it's basically if there's <clears throat> it appears as if there's no or very little pedestrian safety infrastructure, then that risk. Go and stick up. And you said earlier that uh, markings probably are insufficient alone. Uh, I guess this is a long way to getting at my question of so uh, how how can we share these results with engineers like in MPOs or at TechStot in order to better inform their decisions about uh, marking signalization, et cetera? And I know they they probably have a good handle on this, but how can we help them out even a little bit more? Yeah, I mean, definitely uh, the results should inform them, like, you know, sidewalk, for example. That's an influential variable as well. So definitely, but then um, where, right? I mean, you cannot put sidewalk everywhere. I yeah, mean, yeah. it's good. I mean, we want to put everywhere, but again, we have limited resources. So definitely, I mean, you know, we can identify the high risk the way we identified the high risk locations, we could definitely, you know, put those countermeasures there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then a question uh, online, Boniface. Uh, how did you get bus stop related crashes? Did you use a buffer and capture everything within a buffer? Yes, we we used again. We used uh, bus stop is a point, and we drew like two fifty feet. Again, again, we used a SAS software uh, and got all the crashes within the 250 feet. And then uh, we did the quality check to make sure that the 250 does not include the cross street where the bus stop is not located. I mean, only the street where the yeah. bus stop is located. Okay, awesome. I think there was the another question. Uh, did you compare the risk factor associated with the locations? Oh, I missed that one. Sorry. Um, did you um again? We did not. I mean, again, our data point here is a crash, uh, is a bus stop, right? So we try to capture all the variables that are there at the bus stop. So that bus stop could have some pedestrian countermeasures already, right? We, yeah. which is, I mean, crosswalk. Mark crosswalk is one among them, right? So we we collected all the variables that influence the safety. Uh, question by uh, Rick: Was there a consideration for who caused the pedestrian crash? 
if a bus stop is higher risk due to pedestrians being at fault versus drivers at fault? No, we did not. not. And I don't think I don't think there is a way we can do that with the Chris data we have. I, I don't think we can assign who is at fault. We don't have that variable in the crash data. Oh, OK. All right. And then uh, Robert has a uh, uh, question, comment and a question. City of Houston CBD has the highest pedestrian crashes, which has sidewalks, signalized intersections, and crosswalks. Did you look at CBD in isolation? No, we did okay. not. All great follow-up questions for future work. <laughs> for future work. But, but again, you might have noticed in Austin, I mean, even in Houston too, most of the bus stops that we identified as high risk are in the CBD area, most of them. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Srinivas, Mohammed, thank you very much. I appreciate this. Uh, everyone, thank you for joining us over your lunch hour. Very much appreciated. Uh, if you, uh, we, we have your name on our list and you'll get a, an email when we identify the time and the date uh, for the next speaker. And again, if you have anybody else who's interested in attending, we it's free, it's open to everybody uh, inside TTI, outside of TTI. Uh, please do send that link to others who you may think uh, are interested in joining us. So with that, I wanna thank you very much for joining us today and thank uh, again, Srini and Mohammed for your great information. Yeah, thank everybody, you so much. Day. Thanks. Thank Bye. you so much, Mike, Thank for you. the opportunity. You bet. Thanks, Reed. Thank you. Bye.